following screencast will show how to use the Cognitive Optical Brain Imaging Studio software, COBE, to record optimal data, FNIA data, from either the FNIA 100, FNIA 200, or FNIA 300 hardware modules from Biopack Systems. The first thing you need to do when you launch the software is go in and select your device. You need to select the appropriate device, which is fnearusb.dll, and that is selected from the list by cl clicking on the Select button and then closing out. And at the top, you should see Current Device, fnearusb.dll. All of this assumes that you've already connected your FNIA hardware to the computer running the Kobe software using the USB cable that's attached to the device. And then you also need to have the sensor array connected to the unit, to the two connectors labeled one and two, and preferably having the sensor array on a subject. And I've got a subject sitting next to me with the sensor array attached to their forehead. And we should be at this point ready to go. Once you've selected your hardware, the next thing we need to do is go into the layout and we're going to pick the layout file which for the purpose of setup is raw and there are a few options in there and we select raw and close and then that gives us a view of each of the 16 channels, voxels 1 through 16. And that allows us to ensure that we've got everything set up correctly. Now by starting the device, we should start to see some data. And as I said, I've already got the sensor array attached to my subject's forehead. And I'm holding the sensor in place using a Coban wrap that any kind of bandage or anything will work. Uh, and it's important that it's comfortable for the subject. You need to make sure that you don't have any hair coming down in front of the sensors and that the band is securely fastened and there are no, there's no light coming in or breaks in contact. Now if we look at the d display, we can see that most of these signals are falling in a pretty narrow band and the optimal range is between 700 and 3000 and there are some things that we can do to adjust these levels to start off with if we stop the current device and we go into device settings it's a multi-tab dialog and the tab we require is data acquisition settings the default here is to have the drive current, the LED drive current, set to 10 and the gain set to 10. But if we just step this up to 15 and then we start the device again, we'll see our levels should increase a little bit. Now, if you've got one or two that are still a little bit on the low side, but everything else is falling in there, you can probably start at this point. These may be a little low, but on the right hand side there's a balance option over here labeled gains. If I just set this to 3000 and we hit set, what we're looking for now is to make sure that each of these channels are, I are all falling in that 700 to 3000 window. And it looks like all of them are good with the exception of this channel over here. And I'm not going to worry too much about that for the purposes of this tutorial, but you know, you'll find that you can play around with that. Maybe if we adjust the sensor just a little bit, we can get this one in play. But really, the, the idea is to try and get each of them in that 700 to 3000 band and with the exception of this one I think we're 
we're good to go. So at this point we can stop our device and we're going to change our layout and this time we're going to set the layout so that we're looking at the oxygenated signals rather than the raw and we actually have a layout that we've already created so I'm going to go into display format um, go into load layout from file and I've got one here that I created earlier it's called biopack demo just make it a little bit easier for this tutorial if I move the command line up in this particular setup we're looking at eight of the voxels and this is channel three four five and six on the one side and 11, 12, 13 and 14 on the other. So we're not looking at all 16, we're actually only looking at half of the sensors. And once we've opened this up, oh, I should also mention at the top here we've got a new display. This gives us a heat map so you get sort of a more general indication of what activity is taking place, whereas these individual graphs down below give you a, a channel by channel indication. So now what we're going to do is start a new experiment. So the first thing we have to do is put in our experimenter's name. I'm just going to put some initials in there. Subject number, experiment number, and we can put a description down here if we want. Now we get a summary of our settings. And at this point we're ready to start the device and now we can see each of the eight channels displayed on the screen and we can see our heat map but before we actually start collecting data we have to run a baseline it's important during this part of the experiment that the subject is relaxed and they're not thinking about anything. One of the best techniques is just to look at the wall and really you know, try and zone out as much as anything. So I'm going to hit start baseline. is great. So now we've got our data on the screen and you can see these are relative changes in um, oxygenation levels. And we can see our heat map is working dependent upon what our subject is doing. So I'm just going to run a couple of simple tests to demonstrate some changes. I'm going to ask my subject just to lower their head down. second I'm going to ask them to take a deep breath and hold it in for a few seconds. Take a deep breath please. So those are some simple little tests you can do just to make sure that you know, your signals are responding the way they should. Um, but that, using one of the you know, predefined formats, is a very quick and easy way to get up and running. And this really concludes our tutorial on setting up the FNIR 100, 200, and 300 hardware to record optimal data.